Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 just released, and while we explore the new location, the Play Care, we find tons of new VHS tapes with a bunch of lore. And today I'm gonna go over and break down every single VHS in the game, revealing things like big plot details, new questions about future chapters, and even some secret audios and tapes that I don't think many people have caught yet. So first, when playing Chapter 3, the game starts off with us being dumped in a massive trash compactor by Catnap, which after escaping, quickly takes us to a small room with our first VHS tape called Claire Harper debrief which when playing shows us an image of a gas mask while some dialogue plays all right miss harper please explain the situation well luck any not all the children were getting asleep it was peaceful quiet catnap had the red smoke in the room then suddenly there was this scream not near as happened i know but this i mean dilated pupils and quivering lips the way her eyes darted around the room and i swear her hand and mine it felt like her blood was boiling beneath her skin she saw something too. Something horrible. She. Miss Harper will provide the very best care we can offer. But this is important. Did Marie happen to describe what she saw? Yes. A monster, she said, said that it was colorless. I wanted to talk to her. See how she's doing. I, I just I really need to hear her voice right now. That would not be advised. Miss Harper, there are many concerns we must address at this time, but vitals show normal, and we'll continue to monitor. She'll be okay. No! Well, pardon me if I'm not comforted by that! Just bring my little girl back to me! <laughs> so this first tape details the counselor named Claire Harper talking to the employees about one of her children named Maria, who had a violent nightmare while sleeping in Home Sweet Home, with quivering lips, boiling blood, and violent screams, possibly aided by the red smoke coming from Catnap's mouth that put all the children to sleep at night. Now, what makes this interesting is that we've actually already seen this incident before in the Chapter 3 ARG from last year, where again in the document, we see Claire Harper describing a similar situation with her child, Marie Payne. And interestingly enough, you might actually recognize this child's name, because in some old Chapter 2 documents, they had already confirmed that Marie Payne would eventually become the child experiment for the Mommy Longlegs monster. Meaning eventually, between this nightmare tape and when we see her in Chapter 2, she was actually experimented on and became the giant Mommy Longlegs. In fact, when Claire asked the employees if she could see Marie again and hear her voice, they respond extremely dismissively saying that would not be advised, Miss Harper. Likely because they were using her to create the now Mommy Longlegs. Also, they talk a lot about how Marie saw this colorless monster during the nightmare who might be the prototype, but I'm not sure. But moving on to the next VHS tape, after entering Playcare for the first time on their own tram system, we get to see a little VHS tape for the ride from the Playtime co-founder Elliot Ludwig that tells his story about why he created Playcare. When you look around at the world today, what one thing do you think it needs more of? I asked around once. Money. I never have enough. Understanding. I can never get any. Faith. The common man has lost it. But I think each was also missing something. You see, not one of them could muster a smile. A smile is hope. A smile is love. And there is nothing more gratifying to my soul than being the reason for a child's smile. That is why it is with enormous pleasure that as the founder of Playtime Co., I announce Playcare, our very own on-site orphanage. Now, there isn't too much to break down here. It's mostly just reused dialogue from trailers and teasers, but it shows to us that at least in the eyes of the public, Elliot was this Walt Disney-esque man who showed nothing but care towards the factory and the people and children inside of it, which matters a lot later in this video. But then moving on, when inside Playcare, we get to pick up the Grab Pack 2.0, which gives us new hands and another VHS tape that explains how to use them that I'm not going to break down. But later in the game, after entering Home Sweet Home and running through a big pit of gas, things start to get extremely weird. As while walking through the abandoned orphanage, we begin to hear a news report that starts off by talking about a dead body being found on the premise of Playtime Co. Tragic news this morning, as of 9.45 a.m., local authorities report that the body of a young...
has been found on the estate of the late Elliot Ludwig. With more details following when found in an upstairs bedroom in a large duffel bag, officers on scene report that the remains appear to have been disturbed. Organs as well as key bones from the skeletal structure were reported missing from the body. It is unknown at this time whether this extraction was, in fact, the cause of death. So this tape, like we said, reports the death of somebody young inside of Playtime Co. But more specifically, their body appeared to have been extremely extracted of different body parts and this actually is extremely important because if you didn't know in catnap's experimentation blueprint and presumably the rest of the toys they noted multiple uses of different real human body parts like spinal cords and a central nervous system but we never knew where they were getting these random body parts until now from other people but throughout the hallway the report goes on even deeper saying following recent events playtime co was asked for any comment regarding the discovery. This is what they had to say. Quote, it's sickening. Elliot Ludwig was a great man, and those who knew him understood that he was not capable of violence, let alone what others now claim. He had a deep love in his heart for children like this one, making the actions of whoever planted this body all the more sick. We look forward to clearing his good name, both in the public eye and in the eyes of the law. Stay tuned for more. So now we hear Playtime Code defending the factory saying things like Elliot was a great man and those who knew him understand he was not capable of violence, which for one tells us again that Elliot Ludwig was seen as this perfect could do no wrong man, and two that they used a lot of past tense here suggesting that whenever this was recorded, Elliot, the great man he was, had long passed away. Or was he so great? Because further along, we hear one more recording from the news report that paints a much different story. Despite Playtime's proclamation of Ludwig's innocence, many believe his reclusive and mysterious nature displayed over the previous decades lends suspicion to this claim. When questioned, Ludwig's neighbors indicated that he would often return to his home in strange hours of the night and depart again before sunrise. Some believed he was sick. Others that don't move. Don't move an inch. Playtime Co., it seems, intends to keep all its name within its brand regardless, but is sure to be a long legal battle will follow. So so for the first time ever, we actually learn about the character and founder, Elliot Ludwig, and apparently despite his good reputation, he was actually deemed to be extremely creepy, spending all of his nights away from home, presumably at the factory for an unknown reason, and perhaps this could be because we previously learned Elliot was an extremely hard worker and maybe spent his days and nights working at the factory, or on the darker end, maybe he could have been the one responsible for the experiments and real life toys we see in the factory today. But moving on, as we keep running through the halls of Home Sweet Home, we run across a small radio that is playing what sounds like a bunch of gibberish in the room. <laughs> However, you might already be able to tell that this gibberish is actually a secret message being played in reverse. And naturally, if we reverse the audio, we hear an extremely disturbing message. I find your presence intrusive after all this time you return. You come in here and you kill and murder. You pillage and destroy. Your presence was demanded 10 years ago and you didn't show up. 8, 8, 1995. You were supposed to be here. Why weren't you here? You missed the event. You missed the meeting. You missed the party. You have no right to be here. Eight. Eight. 1995. So this time, we hear the speaker talking about us, the player, and how they weren't happy we came back into the factory and started killing the toys, saying they find our presence intrusive and your presence was demanded 10 years ago and you didn't show up, while also throwing around the date 8-8-1995 on multiple occasions, referencing the famous date in Playtime Co.'s history where on August 8th, 1995 at 11.01 was the Hour of Joy, the event where all the toys attacked back against employees, causing them to go missing. And this tape seems to be extremely angry at us for being the only employee to survive and revisiting almost like some kind of inner conscience and guilt for us living through the attack while all the other employees died. And this gets expanded upon more in the next tape, where after seemingly reaching the end of Home Sweet Home, we pick up a tape called Welcome to Playtime that plays this. 
Greetings, employees, and welcome to your first day here in Playtime. We're certain that in the days to come, you'll find your new family here every bit as loving and supportive as your own. Feel free to wander the hall, sit in the mess for lunch, or join the counselors of Playcare, whose diligence and care for our children will help shape a brighter future. Just you see. See. Every one of you has your part in that future, so should you come back tomorrow feeling unhappy for where you are or what you've done, worry not, for your supervisor is here and happy to listen. And should you come back years later, your conscience finally getting the better of you, may you descend into the dark and the dust, finding all that awaits you are incomprehensible horrors. Their smiling mouths full of teeth, and me and plastic, watching and waiting patiently for their turn at a warm welcome. Or perhaps they won't allow you such time to figure your place in the world you'd left. A world that's theirs now. Welcome home. Before then, a big nightmarish huggy comes out and kills us. Now, this tape is very interesting because first off, it gives us a motive as to why we actually went back in the factory. See, in the beginning of the game, we supposedly went back to the factory because we got a letter telling us that the employees were still there. However, with this tape saying thing is like, should you come back, your conscience finally getting the better of you. It seems to suggest that the real reason we returned to the factory is because we were guilty about something. And after this huggy VHS, we wake up and realize this entire VHS tape was a dream and was inside of the player's head, confirming this tape was actually us and our inner conscience speaking to ourselves which gives me a million different theories for what we could be guilty about but that's for another video but moving on after waking up from the dream and progressing through the real home sweet home we discover this tucked away room that hides another vhs tape called 1332 report void that plays subject is stable designated 1322 clear neural abnormalities were detected in his recent checkup though highly irregular we've pulled him from the home sweet home just before lights out to perform my what are you doing out of bed? Is Kevin sick? Why did you take him away? I, yes, Kevin is very sick. Very sick. But we want to make him better. But he can only get better if we take him to where we can provide proper care and give him proper rest. Do, do you really think he will be okay? I should think so. We're good at what we do, son. We paid attention in school and got our proper rest when we needed it. Just like you need it now. Come now. Let's get you on back to bed. Okay. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Joseph. And I promise you, your friend will be all right. When you see him again, he'll have never been better. So this tape is the scientist doing a log on a kid named Kevin, codenamed Experiment 1322. However, while doing so, another kid walks in to investigate, asking the scientist if his friend was sick and if he'd be okay. Which, of course, the scientist confirms, even saying, when you see him again, he'll have never been better. When, in all reality, this sick child, like the previous Marie Payne, wasn't actually sick, and was seemingly instead being investigated to be turned into an actual toy, hence his experiment number 1322. Furthermore, as we go deeper into Home Sweet Home, we also find ourselves another VHS tape, this time taking place in the teaching area of Play Care, that plays this. Ah, and here they all are. Well, of course, they'd never miss this. Look at Mrs. Brooks, who's going away? Shh, 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 shh. This week, Dr. White here has selected our very own Samuel Lee. Yay. Now, before he goes, let's all give Sam one last goodbye, shall we? One, two, three! Goodbye, Sam! Now, in this tape, we hear a scientist named Dr. White selecting a child, Samuel Lee, to come with them for an unknown reason, where all the children then wish them a happy goodbye, which obviously is meant and designed to look extremely wholesome and happy, but in all reality, is just another example of how the scientists in Playcare selected and chose the children for experimentation, picking this mysterious Samuel child to follow them, probably to get turned into a toy. In fact, we also hear the teacher, Miss Brooks, say... This week, Dr. White selected our very own Samuel Lee, which makes it sound like this was a weekly occurrence that happened extremely often. Moving on, though, after entering the school area of play care later in the game, we meet a new character named Miss Delight, one of the teachers of the factory. And as we travel through her school, we find a VHS tape simply titled Illegible Writing, that when playing shows an image of her homemade mace made of pencils while she says, Where are the kids? Where are the children? Are they in the same place as the employees? 
No. Are the children safe? Yes. Oh, can I see them? No. And that was it. That's all he'd tell me. <laughs> Probably because he knew I'd kill them all. <laughs> So in this extremely eerie dialogue, we hear Miss Delight recall herself asking questions to a mysterious creature who I believe is Catnap, because in some notes throughout the game, we could read that she actually made a deal to work with Catnap as long as he spared her life, so we know they were working together. And in the tape, she asked him if the children from Playcare were safe, getting the response yes, and asked if she could see them where Catnap responded no. But what's odd is at the end, she says, that's all he'd tell me, probably because he knew i'd kill them all reason being throughout the entire schoolroom, we saw a bunch of different notes where she talks about how hungry she is and how scared she was being inside the factory even going as far in the fifth note to guiltfully announce she had killed and eaten all of the other people in the school in order to stay alive and she's basically saying in this tape that if she got to see the children again she'd do the same to them which is extremely extremely dark but moving on the next tape takes place after exiting the school where in the underground area we find Find a tape named after two employees, Stuart and Rich, that plays this. Stupid clunky elevator. What was that, Richie? Nothing, nothing. Let's just get this shipment dropped and go. Hello, my name is Elliot Ludwig. Would you look around? I take it you're not a fan of this place, are you? Nope. Never liked the feel of it. Don't you think these kids deserve some real sunlight instead of floodlights and painted skies? Hell, we're not even allowed to talk to these kids. Isn't that... <clears throat> Sorry, Stu. Sorry? <laughs> that doesn't sound like the rich I know. Well, I'm trying to stop being so pissed off all the time. Uh, you're just different, Rich. But um, I always liked that about you. You know, Richie, with my retirement coming up, they've been pushing hard for me to choose my replacement. I'm thinking about giving the role to you. Really? Really. Wow. I, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm glad to see not everyone in this place has it out for me. Not everybody, Rich. Not everybody. Now, this tape is actually a follow-up to some VHS tapes we had already gotten in Chapter 1 and 2, uh, documenting the story of a character named Rich making his way up the company. First working in the storage area, hating his job in Chapter 1. Then in Chapter 2, he got moved to the rejected toys room, which he also hated. But in this new tape, we see him turn over a new leaf and hear his co-worker, Stuart, offer him a position higher up in the company, which is an extremely nice ending to all this, and I hope we see more from Rich in the upcoming chapters moving on to the next tape over when we first enter the play place we quickly find a new vhs titled the catnap check-in where when playing we hear the character leith pierre documenting the creation and monitoring of catnap okay this is catnap experiment number 1188 what's his real name again ah okay <clears throat> hey uh, theo how you doing bud normally i'd have dr sawyer do this but he's uh out let's say. So you got me until they find his replacement. First off, congrats. This is officially your fourth year in your new body, and you've made some real progress, pal. I was told that when you and the other smiling critters, you know, dog day, picky piggy, yada yada yada, were added into play care, that you weren't really getting along too well with the kids like everybody else was. But look at you now. The kids love you, and that red smoke, I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? Is his, uh, voice thingy still broken? <laughs> Theo, nobody's gonna save you. This prison is where you belong. We'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care, but your home is here. And as for the prototype, his home is in the lab. This is your life now. Get used to it. Now, this tape tells us a ton. First off, we hear Leith trying to congratulate Catnap, whose real name is Theo, trying to lift his mood up with his only words being, the prototype will save us. Foreshadowing the hour of joy that took place later, suggesting he had been planning it for a while. And Leith responds to this saying, nobody's gonna save you, the prison is where you belong. Referencing the play place prison homes we see in the game, where we can actually see his old cell scratched up with a massive hole in the bottom 
bottom, likely being where he escaped. But something that's also interesting about this tape is that Leaf talks about the employee Harley Sawyer, the creator of the Bigger Bodies Initiative, saying, I'd have Dr. Sawyer do this, but he's, uh, out. So you've got me till they find his replacement. Now, they don't specify what happened to Harley, but I'm going to take the assumption he either died or became a toy of his own since they're being super suspicious about it. But this does give us a main timeline here as this tape was on the four year anniversary of Catnap's creation. And going back to a chapter three Catnap cross department report from the ARG, we can see that February of 1991 marked his three month anniversary, confirming he was created in December of 1990. Also confirming to us Harley Sawyer died within the next four years and that this tape took place in 1994, just months before the hour of joy in 95. Moving on later in the game, when we enter the counselor's office, we find a VHS for the emergency meeting from the hour of joy that we've already seen in the first trailer. And then later on, we run into Stella Graver's office, the head of play care, where we find another VHS tape called the Hartman incident, which plays. <laughs> Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Hartman, please have a seat. How was your ride down? It was, uh, nothing like we were expecting. Uh, Mr. Ludwig's speech was, well, it just confirms for us that you're the orphanage we want to go through. It's a truly magical place. I felt right at home from the second I entered. You open that door the first time and you just know you're never going to leave. Kind of like finding a home as a child and always thinking of it when you want to feel comforted. I understand you want to give Jeremy that home. Yes. And we would like to adopt. Amazing. You'll be perfect for... Oh. What? Well, it appears there's been some complications. Complications? <laughs> what kind of complication? I... I don't know. Um, the form says testing. <laughs> what does that mean? Miss Graper, we deserve a better explanation than that, don't you think? You're in charge of all this! How could you not know? And why are we only finding out about this now? I... I don't. I'm sorry. Now, this tape is probably the most confusing of them all because we don't know who the Hartman family is, but this does tell us that there were actual families coming in and adopting the children from outside of play care. Only the child they wanted to adopt was marked in the form as testing, according to Stella, which likely means that the child in question was being used for an experiment or in the game station and likely couldn't be adopted and brought outside play care where they could potentially leak their secrets, so that's my only guess. This also tells tells us that even higher up employees like Stella, the head of play care, didn't actually know about the experiments going on. Moving on to what is probably the most interesting tape of them all, after we finally power up the entire play care system and get chased away by Catnap, we are then brought to a VHS tape called Log 24459, ran by employee Harley Sawyer that says, Log code 24459. Four, five, nine. In relation, experiment 1006, the prototype. Stubborn as he is, and always silent with each passing session, I'm still uncovering fresh data nonetheless. Today's discovery... <laughs> End of log. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess... A question. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? This question referred to what exactly? You stick us, beat us, tear our flesh. Do you feel it? There's a secret inside you, 1006. Valuable beyond all measure. I cut and prod and burn at it. And I get closer with each session. So speak, or oh, don't. Fight, or give in. Regardless, I learned something new about you every day. Thank you. You thank me? Absolutely. I learned something new about you every day. So this is extremely interesting because for the first time we get to hear the prototype talk in a bunch of weird voices. And in this he actually questions Harley Sawyer on if he had any feelings or guilt for what happened to the children he was experimenting on. Showing that the prototype was in some way on the side of the children and wanted to protect them against the employees. Furthermore, towards the end of the tape Harley says, fight or give in. Regardless, I learn something new about you every day. Before 
the prototype repeats his exact phrase back at him mimicking his voice now what this tells us is similar to characters from other games like the mimic the prototype used his extreme intelligence to mimic voices of other people and probably to trick other people into thinking it's them which is a super cool and interesting detail because it means all the voices we hear in the game could have actually been the prototype tricking us in some capacity leaving a lot to be theorized about finally on to the last vhs in the game and definitely the biggest after defeating catnap and powering up play care poppy gives us our final tape as our reward called the hour of joy the event where the toys fought back we mentioned earlier showing us what truly happened on that day So this tape is extremely disturbing because we could see all of the toys finally fighting back against the employees and even some innocent tourists touring around the factory. And plus, it also reveals to us that Kissy Missy was the one who saved herself when being transported into play care at the end. And this event we are seeing here perfectly explains where all the employees went and how they all went missing, finally giving us our true answer and even video footage of these scenes. And with that being said, it already brings up a bunch of questions like if the prototype is behind this and saved them like catnap said he would then why did they have to kill them all even the innocent bystanders why couldn't they have just ran away and escaped like what huggy tried to do in a previous vhs tape in 1991 i don't know but overall it seems like generally the hour of joy was a good thing for the children while on the other side the poppy doll our friend told us that this was actually a bad thing and we needed to kill the prototype for it so with all these vhs tapes there's a ton of theorizing to do and i'm gonna go do that now subscribe so you don't miss that